What's good, guys? It's uh, almost 11.20 my time. And for whatever reason, I can't even explain it to you. I'm not even going to try. Um, I felt compelled to make this video tonight. This video is going to be about Ryan Singleton. His death. How did he die? And who killed him? This is from the Cinemaholic. And it's dated November the 1st, 2020. That's a picture of Ryan Singleton. The article reads, Bounce, the only multi-platform entertainment network specifically for African Americans, premiered its first ever original true crime docuseries, Dying to be Famous, The Ryan Singleton Mystery. And to say that it is intriguing might just be an understatement. Chronicling the disappearance and death of Ryan Singleton using footage his friends shot, along with exclusive interviews and new clues, it follows the events of his last few days and weeks alive in an attempt to piece together what exactly happened to him and why. Now, if you're here curious to know all the details about this particular case, we've got you covered. It says, how did Ryan Singleton die? That's a picture of Ryan Singleton again. That's actually from the Bounce platform. Ryan Singleton, a 24-year-old aspiring model and film producer from Atlanta, was determined to pursue fame and fortune in Hollywood with his closest friends. Together, they dreamed of being the black entourage. But it all came crashing down in 2013 when Ryan disappeared, never to be seen alive again. He had rented a car for a weekend trip and had driven from L.A. to Las Vegas. But the car broke down in the Death Valley when he was on his way back. Ryan was subsequently spotted and picked up by the California Highway Patrol and then dropped off at a gas station in Baker, California, safe and sound. A friend of his set out from Los Angeles to pick him up, but by the time he arrived in Baker, Ryan was nowhere to be found. Ryan's friend reported him missing as soon as he got back to the city, and a thorough search ensued. But it was only 74 days later that he was found dead in California's Mojave Desert, about two miles away from the gas station. Ron's body was dumped, mutilated, and missing several organs, including his liver, kidneys, eyes, ribs, and heart. Of course, an autopsy was performed, but its report wasn't very conclusive. His cause of death was listed as undetermined due to advanced decom decomposition. And his manner of death was ruled to be the same. The report also stated that Ryan's head was missing flesh down to the bone on the right side secondary to animal activity, which was listed as the reason for the loss of his organs as well. Who killed Ryan Singleton? There's a picture of Ryan with his mother. The truth is, no one knows. Ryan's mother, Iris Flowers, has been on a quest to find out what happened to her son ever since his body was found. But even with meticulous investigations, there have been no publicity, I'm sorry, no publicly known concrete leads, and no one has ever been charged in his death. Questions about the path Ryan chose for his career, along with who he talked to and about what, during his stay in Las Vegas, and even in the patrol car ride to Baker, having a connection with his death, have been raised over time. However, nothing has ever seemed suspicious enough. The one mystery that remains is what happened to Ryan after he arrived at the AM PM gas station in Baker. And maybe, if that can be answered, Ryan's death could be solved. Before his disappearance and death, Ryan was thriving in his profession. He left Atlanta, Georgia at the age of 21 to move to New York City and make it big, and for him, it was going well. He got a few jobs here and there before landing a spot on the runway during New York's Fashion Week, 
and shortly after he set his sights on Hollywood. With some of his friends, Ryan packed up his stuff into a truck and moved west to Los Angeles. Together, they documented their journey with the hopes of one day making it into a documentary series called Are We Famous Yet? But sometime later, Ryan left California and moved back to New York, where he got married to celebrity stylist Keith Brewster, a man twice his age, in a wedding that his mother didn't even know about. Again, that's a photo of Iris Flowers, his mother. Four months later, the couple split, and Ryan moved back home to be with Iris. She recalls that he was quite ominous during that time, saying things like, Something bad is going to happen to me, isn't it? And I've done a lot of things to hurt a lot of people. When she asked Ryan if he owed someone money, he said no, and when she tried to dig deeper, he changed the topic. And so Iris never found out what her son was talking about. Two days later, Ryan abruptly left for Los Angeles, and she never saw him alive again. Yet strangely, on the day he went missing, he called her up and asked her to send him $100. And then Iris got a call from Ryan's estranged husband. He told her that her son had called him and it seemed like he was drunk, even going as far as to say that Ryan's life could be in danger. This is the autopsy report. Um, regarding Ryan Gerald Singleton. It's from the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department. Uh, they initially identified him as John Doe, number 111-13, but was later identified as Ryan Gerald Singleton, age 24, found on September the 22nd, 2013, around 1945 hours. The autopsy was done three days later, on the 25th of September 2013 at 10.05 hours. San Bernardino County Coroner's Facility. The autopsy states, According to the Deputy Coroner Investigator's report from information received from San Bernardino County Sheriff's deputies, on September 21, 2013, at 1945 hours, two men were walking in the desert west of Baker when they found what appeared to be human remains. They called 911 and San Bernardino County Fire Department, responded, and confirmed death. The body was discovered by a local resident who was hiking in the desert with his cousin. It was thought that the decedent might be an individual who had been reported missing in Baker on July 10, 2013. When the body was examined by the deputy coroner at 0900 hours on September the 22nd, 2013, the body was clothed in black shorts, faded black high-top court shoes, black socks, and an orange rubber bracelet with Tricamp 2013 etched into it on the right wrist. The trauma was noted. No trauma was noted, although it was thought that one of the sutures in the skull might be dislocated. Several bones appear to have been removed from the body by animal activity. Most of the ribs on the left side of the body have been moved away from the body, and it appeared that the thoracic organs were missing along with the thoracic musculature. The body appeared to match the description of Ryan Singleton. A missing person report was made regarding Ryan Singleton on July the 10th, 2013. According to that report, Singleton had a same-sex spouse in New York City, but had left New York to live with his mother in Georgia. He then had flown to Los Angeles, where he stayed with a friend of his on July the 6th, 2013. On July 7th, he left for Las Vegas. On July 8th, he called his friend in L.A., stating he was on his way back from Las Vegas on July and on July 8th, 2013, at approximately 2,200 hours. He again called his friend in L.A. saying he was going to pull over and sleep for a while. On July 9th, he called to say he was running low on fuel and money. His friend deposited $60 in Singleton's bank account. Singleton called him again at 1500 hours on July the 9th, saying he was in Baker and asked if his friend could come and pick him up. 
His friend drove to Baker looking for Singleton but could not find him and returned to L.A. and the friend filed the missing person report on July the 10th. During the missing persons investigation, it was learned that Singleton had been found wandering along Interstate 15 by a California Highway Patrolman. Singleton saying he was looking for his car and had been attacked by small animals. Singleton and the highway patrolman drove the freeway looking for the vehicle but did not find it. The highway patrolman dropped Singleton off at an AMPM gas station in Baker. It was the officer's opinion that Singleton did not appear under the influence of drugs or alcohol. It says also refer to coroner's investigative report. External examination. These are the partially skeletonized remains of an adult male lying within a body bag. The remains are identified by a coroner's tag as John Doe, number 111-13, The weight of the remains is 50 pounds. The hair is black. The eye color and skin color are undetermined. The hair on the head is short and tightly curled consistent with black ancestry. Clothing. There are high top canvas Chuck Taylor all-star shoes on both feet, size 13. There were also socks on both feet. There are, there are possibly what might have been athletic shorts with a tie closure. There is no apparent clothing on the upper torso. Evidence of medical intervention. None. Evidence of post-mortem change. The body is nearly completely skeletonized. There is marked, markedly mummified dark skin over both feet that were protected by shoes. Over the dependent portions of the legs, the skin is heavily mummified and leather-like. Evidence collected at autopsy. None. Tattoos, none found. Radiography, radiographs, I apologize. Multiple radiographs are taken of the head, torso, abdomen, pelvis, and long bones of the upper and lower extremities. No unusual metallic fragments or significant disease process are noted. Examination. The head has missing flesh down to bone on the right side secondary to animal activity, exposing the right temporal and parietal, parietal bones. Sorry, guys. The skin of the face is markedly dehydrated. There is short, dark, curly hair and a goatee-type beard and mustache. The flesh around both eyes, as well as the eyes themselves, have been removed by animals and or insect activity. The flesh on the right side of the neck is absent, exposing underlying cervical vertebrae. There are extensive dried, dead insects within this area. The chest has absent flesh on the right anterior chest, exposing all of the ribs on the right side of the chest. There is a strip of intact mummified skin extending from the chin down to the pelvis. The anterior soft tissue is absent in the pelvis, exposing the pelvic bones as well as the sacral bone. Sacral bone. The right scapula, scapula, and manubrium, manubrium. I'm sorry, guys, are present. The left scapula and manubrium are seen, but most of the ribs on the left chest have been removed by animal activity. The bones on the right upper extremity are present. There is a thin strip of mummified tissue of the upper arm. The skin around the elbow is mummified and the skin of the right hand is markedly mummified. All digits are present, all soft tissue other than the mummified skin of the upper forearm on the right side is missing by animal activity. The left upper extremity is nearly completely disarticulated, disarticulated from the body, attached only by a thin piece of mummified skin attached near the elbow. All of the skin and soft tissue around the humerus is absent. The skin of the anterior, anterior, hold on, anterolateral, lat, lateral, I can't hardly even make out those letters. Proximal forearm is absent, but there is skin over the wrist and fingers, which is markedly mummified. The right lower extremity is disarticulated from the body. The femur is relatively intact and is only attached by a th thin bridge of soft tissue at the knee. 
There is minimal soft tissue, primarily mummified skin, on the proximal right lower leg where the skin around the foot is intact but markedly mummified. The left lower extremity is partially disarticulated from the body, connected by a long strip of skin pos posteriorly. There is skin on the right foot. Most of the skin and soft tissue of the lateral lower extremity is absent. There is patchy, patchy mummified skin over the back. Um, I'm not going to go into all of this. I'm going to read um, the important parts. Uh, this is the internal examination. It suggests a, and this is part of, this is the head part of the internal examination. It suggests that a possible hemorrhage on the right side uh, goes on to say when the decomposed brain is stripped off of the skull, the outer layer of this decomposed brain is stained dark red brown, again suggesting some super, superficial hemorrhage. That's important. Uh, da, 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 da. Goes on to talk about the neck. The thyroid cartilage is not found. Body cavities. No internal organs of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis are present. Secondary to animal activity. There are single linear fractures of the mid portions of both right and left scapula. These are both markedly sun exposed, and this is likely a post mortem drying artifact. Toxicology. Decomposed brain was sent for toxicology. Um, while the screening ELISA or ELISA test for amphetamines was presumptive positivity, no amphetamines were detected using gas chromato chromato <laughs> chromatography. And spectrometry, mass spectrometry. Um, the diagnosis it says decomposed, partially skeletonized body of an adult male found in desert near Baker. Body identified by postmortem fingerprints as Ryan Terrell Singleton instead of Gerald at the beginning. And then it says left temporal fossa fossa fracture, like an autopsy artifact. Cause of death undetermined due to advanced decomposition. Um, again, I have no medical background other than um, a little bit of medical transcription work. Also, uh, I'm very familiar with um, ambulance billing, um, ambulance data entry. I'm familiar with medical terminology. Um, I'm not a doctor, um, any of that. But from what I can read from this autopsy, it doesn't take a white coat to figure out that something happened uh, to his head, okay? He was either hit in the head, um, something happened, all right? Let's watch this short video from uh, Tampa 11 regarding Ryan Singleton. I believe this has uh, several things from his mother in this uh, story. What happened to Ryan, an Atlanta model, chasing his dreams of stardom all the way to Hollywood? But his quest for fame came to a tragic end. His body found his organs missing. Tonight, Vinnie Politan hunts for answers in this Georgia mystery. My name is Ryan S., a.k.a. Shotzi, the model. That's Ryan Singleton, a young aspiring model. His story begins right here in Atlanta, where he was raised by his mom. Somewhere between third and fourth grade, he figured out that his initials of his name, RTS, backward was STR, which meant star. So he started then making himself into a star. In the fall of 2010, Ryan left Atlanta to pursue his dreams of modeling in New York. He landed seven shows during Mercedes Week in, in New York, and that's... That's huge. After success in New York, Ryan and his two friends, Antonio Faison and Jared Davis, set their sights on Hollywood. Their adventure was all caught on camera as they filmed their pursuit of fame for a docu-series called Are We Famous Yet? The inspiration for our docu-series was simple. It was Ryan. 
we wanted to document his journey and, and becoming a model. Once they hit LA, things happened quickly. Uh, we were basically in the inner circle. You know, we were being invited to things that we kind of just saw on television and we're like, okay, now we're here. Then Ryan left LA, returned to New York, and suddenly was married. This is a photo of the ceremony. Next to Ryan is Real Housewife of Atlanta star, Cynthia Bailey. But that's not who he was marrying. I find out on social media, Ryan has gotten married to a man twice his age. I don't even know who this is. I don't have a clue as to what's going on. Ryan married Keith Brewster, but the marriage didn't last. And Ryan returned home to Georgia in the spring of 2013, where things got more mysterious. He says, tell me the truth. Okay. Something bad is going to happen to me, isn't it? Then more mystery. He flew to L.A., met someone, then rented a car, and drove himself to Las Vegas. Then before driving back, he called his mom. I said, boy, you okay? I said, he said, yeah, I'm getting ready to come home. I said, okay, what do you need? He said, I need you to go in my room and get the $100 out of there. Ryan's mom wired the money to him. Then she received a phone call from Ryan's ex. I said, well, Ryan went to the West Coast and told me not to tell you. He said, oh my God, his life would be in danger. Brewster never told Ryan's mom what the danger was, but it was real. Ryan's car broke down in Death Valley on the ride back from Vegas. He flagged down the highway patrol who dropped him off at this convenience store. And then Ryan vanished. 74 days later, his mom received another call. This one from investigators who found Ryan's body. He said, ma'am, Ryan didn't have any organs. He didn't have any eyes, he didn't have a heart, he didn't have any lungs, he didn't have any liver, and he didn't have any kidneys. I said, what? That sounds like somebody took my son's organs and sold them on the black market. The autopsy report answers very few questions. The cause and manner of death, both undetermined. If you're looking for a causative element of death here, I think that it's an environmental death. Unforgiving conditions in the desert, 108 degrees, um, him walking, and all that spells disaster. With his organ was not damaged by animals, but not a, a pointy-eared, tail-wagging, four-legged, furry animal. It was a human animal or animals that did this to my son. Ryan's mom has a lot of issues with the autopsy report I was able to get for her. This report says Ryan had no tattoos, but he had two, and she's wondering whether they were removed so he wouldn't be identified. Now, you can see a lot more of my interview with Ryan's mom and a full breakdown of the report with my investigators on 11alive.com. Now, the bottom line here is this case remains an open investigation, and no one has been able to answer the question, what happened to Ryan? Um, once I upload the video, I'll be able to know whether or not it was, it would allow me to play that video clip that I just played. Sometimes it strikes the video because a news station may not allow me to play it, but I did play a video. Um, but yeah, I just, I felt compelled to bring this story tonight for whatever reason. It was just on my mind and, um, yeah. So I probably will do a follow-up um, on this case because this is very interesting. So while I do believe um, in organ trafficking and things of that nature, um, bringing it back to the Kanika Jenkins case, I do not believe that that's what happened in this case. But in the Ryan Singleton case, whole different ballgame. Uh, Kanika's organs were there. Ryan's were not. So I'm going to end the video on that note, but um, be watching for an update because I will be covering this again. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it.